Hello my soccer universe for the final club competition preview that I have to do for this season. We are talking of course the conference league where the real connoisseurs of European football will tune in or if you're a fan of Lusk or any of these teams that I have here in the background. Yes, this is a very eclectic league when it comes to participating countries. I just wrote down the statistics. We have 16 different countries represented in the Champions League. We have already a step up in the Europa League to 22. And of the 36 teams that are here in the Conference League, we have a total of 29 different countries represented. And crucially, France, for instance, is missing. That's rather curious, telling you how wide ranging the Conference League is. Also, among the qualified teams, I want to point out we have three from Cyprus, we have two from Austria, Belgium, Poland, Switzerland and Slovenia each and the rest only one entry. Which means this will be a rather open competition. It also means, if you see in the back, I've only jerseys of six teams that are in this competition. So chances are high that I again will be scrambling for new jerseys of teams that made it to the quarters or the semis come next season. But I really hope that these six teams up there will do rather well and go deep. And before we talk about qualification, which will be a large chunk of this video, I also want to mention we have two Austrian teams in the Conference League. They both fell in from the Europa League qualifying. And while this was disappointing for these teams, especially my team Lusk, but also for Rapid, when they got there, I actually think that both teams have a good chance of making quite a few points for Austria. And I repeat myself, this is much needed, especially for Lusk, who will lose a good chunk of their coefficient due to the 1920 season that was so successful dropping out. But without further ado, let's jump into the mayhem that was qualifying. As you can see, I have added two more jerseys for qualifying. Those are two teams that did not qualify. Yes, another Austrian team in Austria, Vienna and Los, and we'll get to that. I'm gonna go now through the results of the return legs, where you also see the result of the first leg of each of the rounds. This is gonna take a whole lot of time, but I'm gonna make myself the promise to at least point out one result from each of the slides that I'm showing. And so let's start. Qualification round one. We're starting with really, really, really small teams, but the one result that I really want to point out here is that a team from Tiny Andorra, Interclub des Caldes, had a real banger of winning 5-1 in the return league against Velez Mostar, which is admittedly not a big team, but you know, it's a team that one would recognize. On page two, the big one is of course La Fiorita from San Marino, going to Minsk and beating Isloch Minsk Rayon, 1-0 away from home, going to overtime and then winning on penalties. A San Marines team winning on penalties, I think, is a real story that has to be pointed out. And on the third slide for qualifying round one, Bruno's Magpies from Gibraltar beating Derry City in overtime, having a 2-0 lead from the home leg and then losing 2-0 in regulation, but scoring the ever so crucial goal in the return leg. Qualification round two, another summary team. AC Virtus had a 2-2 going into overtime against Flora from Tallinn, losing 5-2 in overtime. And then we get already to Austria Vienna, who took on Ilves Tampere, losing 2-1 away from home, scoring the away goal rather late that kept them alive. Then they had three times a two-goal lead in this match. Tampere always came back, they let them back in, he goes all the way to penalties where Fitz misses the last one. This was a really tough loss for Austria Vienna that sent them early in sort of a crisis crisis mode already. We also had a real crazy match between Saba from Azerbaijan and Maccabi Haifa. Saba won 3-0 at Haifa and yes, they have to play a neutral ground. However, Maccabi Haifa storm back. It is 5-2 in regulation. They have leveled the score. It's 3-6 going into penalties and then Maccabi Haifa lose their nerve and Saba move on. And also in the end it went well for Aek, but Aek winning at home against Interclub des Cals only 4-3 after having a 4-0 lead having a second leg. A correct for that one. Then Dutch team go ahead Eagles that just scraped into the conference playoffs losing the first round 2-1 to Bran from Bergen in Norway. Also want to point out that Pushkas Academy against Dnipro was a non-contest because Dnipro more or less have folded at this point. Vikingur from Iceland lost at home to Albanian champions Ignatia. However, they win 2-0 away from home. I think that's quite remarkable. And finally, CSKA, the other CSKA from Sofia, winning in overtime against Budućnost and also Vitoria de Guimaraes 
entering the second qualifying round easily 5-0 aggregate over Floriana from Malta. In qualifying round 3 we already had quite some big name matchups. For instance Lege against Brandby. Those two teams, I mean not huge in the European context, but those two are recognizable teams. It is Lege that win 4-3 on aggregate after winning at Brandby 3-2. The manager won, won at home to bring it home. We had FC Copenhagen who had such a great Champions League campaign last season, struggling mightily with Banik Ostrava, beating them on penalties. Ostrava actually missing four of those. However, the surprise result definitely has to be Noah from Armenia beating Ayek at home 3-1 and Ayek not managing to turn this around only winning 1-0 so they lose 2-3 on aggregate that is a major major upset. I also need to point out that towards the bottom the two Polish results first off the hosts of this is conference league final are eliminated by St. 4-3 on aggregate and then Wisla Krakow in an epic Penalty shooter. Those are a second division team from Poland, lost to Rapid Vienna in the Europa League qualifying, go into a 16 round penalty shoot against Spartak Trunova and win that one. After a huge comeback, losing the first leg 3 1, they managed to get it all the way to penalties and move on. Lastly, Hajduk Split, another very recognizable name, lose at home 1 0 to Ruzenberg from Slovakia, and their out Croatian teams have not been doing well in qualifying. On the other side, Vitoria de Gimaresh again, very easy, a 5 0 aggregate over Zurich. Which means we are already in the playoff. Ruzenberg gave Noah, who started in the first qualifying round, eliminated Ike a good run for the money, but Noah actually qualified. But the one really surprising result to me was that Olympia Ljubljana so easily over Rijeka. As I said, Croatian teams did not do well. It's a 6 1 on aggregate. That seems really, really emphatic. Trabzonspor also continued their bad form, losing on penalties to St. Garden. That is also a result that I did not quite expect. And look at the madness between Wiesla Krakow and Circle Bruges. Circle Bruges won 6 1 in Krakow and then lost 4 1 at home. I mean, this one got tight at the point. We also had Panathinaikos, some good news for Greek teams, beating Lance. 3-2 an aggregate thanks to a 2-0 home win. And then in the last round we had, of course, of the big leagues, quite a few teams. Vitoria de Gimaresh romping through conference league qualifying. It's a 7 0 aggregate over Shrinsky Mostar, who actually were last year in the conference league. And Heidenheim having a whole lot of trouble with Hecken, beating them 5-3 on aggregate. Chelsea winning the first leg against Servet 2-0, but then losing 2-1 the return leg. Not so great looking, honestly. Bet is 5 0 over Krivas Kriviroch. And lastly, Fiorentina needing penalties against Pushkas Academia. This is the team that is pushed by Viktor Orban with this great looking stadium in the middle of nowhere in his hometown. They managed a 3 3 in Florence, it's 1 1, and then Fiorentina win it on penalties. And with that, the two times losing Conference League finalists are actually also in the Conference League. And here we have all the qualified teams. And I think it's a nice feature of the Conference League. There's no guarantee spots. If you're from the big league, you have to start in the playoffs. There are also quite some teams that fall into the Conference League from the Europa League, even earlier rounds of Champions League qualifying. So you never know who is actually ending up in the Conference League. And as I said, last, that is a big name team that did not qualify. But you know, we have another big name team in Panathinaikos that actually made it. The pots, I cannot say a lot about them, but that Lask is in pot one. Yes, they deserve that thanks to the good campaigns in Europe over the past five years, but it still seems very much like they are the odd man out in pot one. Heidenheim, thanks to the strength of the German coefficient, are in pot two. Most notably in pot three, we have Rapid and Guimaraes, pot four, Circle Bruges, and I was surprised to see the new Saints from Wales, the first team from Wales to qualify in there, but they had some good qualifying rounds, never quite making it. That's why they deserved the pot four. Palenaikos in pot five seem to be not very well feeling in there. And then pot six, yeah, there are some really, really, how to best say it, outsiders in there. Now let's look at the draw and especially at the winners and the losers, which are the bars to the right. You know, if you have a very red bar, you got a really tough draw. If you have a really, really green bar, you got a good draw. And for instance, we see that Chelsea got a relatively tough draw. All opponents that Chelsea should beat, but it's not overall as easy as one would expect. 
So the average opponents. When I look at Lusk, the one game that I really wanted to have is Fiorentina. Yeah, we have it away from home. That's not good. And then the opponents at home, Jurgarden, Cercle and Wikingur are not really barnstormers. And so it was really, really disappointing that the tickets for these three games that are also played on Thursday at 9 o'clock in the evening are way more expensive than the regular Bundesliga games. I had to make the really tough call. I decided it's not worth it. I'm really sad to say maybe if they perform well, I might get a single ticket, but uh, those tickets prices are just not correct when i see that rapid with their opponents they had way cheaper tickets and speaking of rapid they got the most favorable draw of them all that was surprising to me but if i look at it they have all very beatable opponents except for the last one that they will have in copenhagen i also look for instance at the big team like fiorentina their home games will also not get many fans in the stadium on the other side when i look at heidenheim first season bundesliga they qualify for europe and you get chelsea at home that's a great draw, I would argue. And then we see that a club like Petro Club Hinchesti got a really, really tough draw. Again, probably quite attractive because you play Betis at home, you play Rapid at home. Those are names that you really would like to see. Same thing goes for Mlada Boleslav. Also, playing Betis at home. The question always is how serious will the teams take it? Before the draw, Rapid were just on the outside of the top eight looking in. They are now scheduled to finish in fifth spot. But again, it will be Chelsea, Betis and Fiorentina. Chelsea, the huge favorites. However, we already saw that in the squad, for instance, Cole Palmer was not called up to. I would still, the quality of the Chelsea squad should take them well onto first place in this Conference League campaign. Lusk, yeah, it is just a playoff spot. But I think that it is to be expected. You have to survive. And I think a top half finish for Lusk is, I think, a must. We also see that, for instance, Heidenheim is now not in the top eight at the moment. You know, playing against Chelsea will do that for you. As for the overall favorites, we have, of course, the three that I said. Chelsea, Betis, Fiorentina, Heidenheim should be in there. I guess I would have to get a Heidenheim jersey, honestly. Palatinaikos, Gent and Copenhagen in there as well. You see Rapid C in 10th, Lusk in 13th. So those are the two Austrian teams moving in there and the crazy part is one of these teams will win the trophy and it looks like it's all Chelsea but I think Fiorentina finally will deserve it let's see how serious Betis and Chelsea will take it I think Fiorentina will actually make a good run because this is their trophy that they have been vying for losing as I said two finals in a row The Conference League will already get underway on Wednesday with Bajakshi here taking on Rapid at home. I would love to tell you some great matchups. Yeah, Lask against Your Gardens is of course the one that I will have my focus on. But also Chelsea Ghent, I think, is not a bad matchup to start the competition. I'll let you look at the other games right here. So this ends. My little preview for this Conference League season. It's a little bit more extended. Yes, my favorite team is in there. So I will pay attention to this competition. But you see already from the jerseys in the background, it's rather sparse. I know I have to add a little bit more, but let's see where how this will happen. I forgot to say the final will be played in Wrocław in Poland. I think that's quite exciting to have, again, a smaller country and a smaller city hosting such a final. And let's hope it will be a big final with big names in there. Although I have a feeling that, like last season, we will get one team from a big nation and then we will get one outsider. I would love to see an Austrian team, especially this Austrian team, go there, but I quite don't see that. I have a feeling that maybe a Belgian team? Let's see. How it will go. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on the conference league. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!